to thank everybody for watching Crypto Revolution, where I talk about everything crypto daily. Before we jump into this video, I want to thank everybody for liking the videos, subscribing. I've got quite a few likes. I think one or two videos, I hit over a thousand likes. I'd like to do that again today. Take two seconds. Please like the video. It definitely helps me grow the channel. Be sure and subscribe. I make these video updates all about cryptocurrency, pertinent information every single day for you. You can always count on that with me. Jumping right into the market today in crypto, red day. Overall market cap of cryptocurrency, $184 billion. Bitcoin down to 6919. This is a Bitcoin four hour chart. And we were talking about this yesterday. Possible head and shoulders confirmed. And we did continue lower. Remember that 7100 support level broke today. And so the measured move goes down here to around 66.50 or so. It would be completely normal to think that, hey, 6,400 at some point is in the cards. Now, now, I want you to see this real quick. So your RSI is oversold right now. All right, so that means the relative strength index, RSI, is oversold. When this happens, a lot of times you get a bounce in the price action. So let me show you this right here. Okay, you see we had this big dip and then it bounced. Look at your RSI, oversold, okay? You go, you go back over to this area, same thing. RSI, oversold, big pump. So is there a possibility that we see a bit of an uptick in the price? Yes, and I'll show you that. This is a chart. There's a falling wedge here. Now, if this pattern is valid, because you have you know two touches on top, three, four touches on the bottom, so it's a valid falling wedge, this 68% chance this does break higher. Now, we've got a little bit of bounce here, you know, so potentially the bulls can step in and still save this and keep this guy moving higher. But again, this is the big test for Bitcoin at this level. You know, this breaks lower again. We can talk about those downside targets again for Bitcoin. I've got a cryptocurrency trading group. I've got six chat groups where everybody's posting charts, calling out breakouts, doing everything they can to work together to trade this market. I post, I've got 41 videos in a playlist where if you don't know anything about trading at all, you can watch these videos, you'll be making profitable trades. I post profitable trading setups every single day. Everybody wants to come into this market and make a bunch of money, and that's what we do. If you do want to join the trading group, email me, CryptoBitcoinChris at gmail.com. I'll get you set up and in the group today. If you pay for six months in crypto, you get a 20% discount. If you pay for the year, now you get 30% off and an additional month for free. If you do want to pay with a card month to month, you can do so. There's a Patreon link in the description. So this is BQX. If you guys saw Binance today, BQX took off. Now I posted this on December the 7th, you know, so it's been close to three and a half weeks. These midterm holds, it's that simple. Buy it and hold it. A lot of people don't have time to trade this market. You don't have to be a day trader to make a ton of money in this market. And, and potentially most people in the trading group, they just buy and hold. Midterm hold, you know, they, the difference is this. They know now that, hey, taking profits is part of this. If we don't take our profits, somebody else will take them from us. So again, BQX posted previously. This person stated, I don't make many trades, but I do buy some of the midterm holds that you post. And I made $2,251 on BQX. Thank you for working so hard for us, Chris. Bears are in control as cryptocurrency market turns lower. Yes, the bears have been in control. Let me show you this. This is an idea I want to make sure that you understand. So you guys know that I'm not big on, on riding these downtrends. Like I, I don't want any part of this stuff. Like this costs me money. I'd rather buy closer to the bottom, but I want to wait for an uptick in the price. So here's what I'm looking for. We got this huge falling wedge right here. Now, when this upper trend line, which has been respected since the middle of July, beginning of July, this when this changes, as soon as this price action breaks out here, that's my bullish signal, flip bullish, because something changed that has been constant. This downtrend has changed. Okay, so for me, that's my buy signal. Now, I want to show you why potentially this is something to consider and why it works so well. And so if we go back here to the previous price action, you guys are familiar with this guy. It's the same type falling wedge, okay? Same type falling wedge. If you were if you were coming in here and you're buying these dips, buying these dips on the way down, you know, potentially you've taken some losses. You had to get all the way, you know, you would have went a, a while 
taking some losses in the market. Just to break even, you'd have to wait till May. So my idea is, here, look at this breakout. It broke out here and then moved higher, right? So the idea is, same thing here, at the point where it does break out of this falling wedge, everything changes. Because look, look what happened back here. Look what happened, right? Moonshot. Let's do it again. I'm ready. If you're trying to catch the bottom, catch the bottom, catch the bottom, catch the bottom, how about let the bottom happen when it does and focus on when are we going to run up to the top? You know, there's so much. This is, this is stressful. Like, buy it. You're, you're losing money, losing money. Buy it. Losing money, losing money. Everything changes. Are you going to nail the bottom if you adopt this strategy? Maybe not. But it's not really about catching the bottom because think about all the losses you take buying on the way down. Great. You catch the bottom. You make a little bit more than I do. Just But, but you've already lost all this. Does that make sense? So, again, I just want to paint this picture. This is a good strategy to have in this market, and I just want to plant this seed with you guys. I want you guys to be extremely successful trading this market. So, Bitcoin record hash rate means there's just one thing to do. Buy. Don't think we're quite there yet. Now, to be fair, the hash rate right now is extremely high. The miners, they're mining the heck out of Bitcoin. They're long-term, right? They're long on it. Why? Why is this happening? Because the halving's coming. I think it's about five months from now. Halvings will come, and then it's going to be twice as hard to mine Bitcoin. So they're basically betting on the fact that Bitcoin's going to go up long term, which is probably a given at this point. And they're essentially mining it faster, twice as fast as they will be in the future. Right? So supply is going to get cut. I just think. Man, there, there's so much potential for us to do well in this market. It's amazing. And it's all, all, everything that we've done over the last almost two years, it seems like, to, to, to struggle in this market. Because a lot of people have taken losses over the last two years. Plenty of people had amazing 2017s, but then after that, it's been down sloping. If you're, especially if you're not taking profits, like this market's been rough. Now, everything is kind of at that point where it's, it's going to be changing over the course of 2020. So just be mindful that... There's good things coming for us. Life-changing money starts this year, so be ready. Ethereum miners are earning four times what Bitcoin miners are earning from fees in 2019. And so this is going to change now. Remember, Ethereum miners, they, they've got a difficulty bomb at some point coming, and proof of stake is going to kick in and everything's going to change. Right. I'm excited for Ethereum staking. I, a lot of people that I talk to, they're excited. They're, they're, you got to have 32 Ethereum to stake it, and people are starting to accumulate Ethereum. And again, Ethereum potentially might see $100, right? So there's, there's potentially some more downside. When you're looking at staking these coins, staking in an uptrend is obviously extremely fruitful. But when you, when you start staking in a downtrend, even if you're baking, you know, 7 8%, if, you're, if your coin loses 20% in a day or 10% in a day, Ethereum network survives malicious attack but raises serious security concerns. So there was an intentional attack on December the 31st, which reportedly came very close to bringing down the entire Ethereum network. So there's two Ethereum clients. One's called Parity and one's called Geth. And so this attack basically tricked Parity. And so it could have brought Ethereum down to its knees, but only about 20% of the nodes run parity, whereas obviously 80% run geth. So essentially, there was a person on Twitter that came out and stated that it wasn't really that close to taking down the network. It's just, again, this news, you kind of have to decipher what's true. They, they don't let the truth get in the way of a good story sometimes. Chief economist at Lending Tree slams Bitcoin. Slams Bitcoin. Well, why? Well, why? Well, why would he want to do that? Because just think about think about DeFi. Think about what we're about to do to lending and banking as a whole. I would slam my competition too. I mean, you're you're about to go under lending tree. Good luck. They're calling it the world's biggest crypto pyramid scheme. Again, not a pyramid scheme. They're saying, oh, this Bitcoin's got no real world utility. We know that's not true. They've been trying to create a utility for 10 years. It, yeah, you know what else Bitcoin's been doing for 10 years? I think it's a 9 million percent increase in price. So yeah, store of value. Now, is it the best payment solution? Probably there's other cryptos better. When you see these articles, I want you guys to take a step back and you have to always have a third person view of this. And you have to think, okay, well, where are they coming from? Why, are, why do they have this mindset? 
You know, what, why, why do they have this demeanor? Why, why are they coming from this direction? And do this with all the, the media, the news, the YouTube videos, the tweets that we see. And you really understand, like, these people have a motive. They have a goal. And they want to potentially accomplish something through their message. And so why are they spewing this information? It's because it would only help them. Okay? So let's just be real. Senior software developer at Ripple quits after 6.5 years to focus on Coil. This is big. Well, this gentleman, Evan Swartz, he co-invented the Interledger protocol, which is an open suite of protocols for connecting ledgers of all types and the payment solutions. That's, it's the base of Ripple's vision of the Internet of Value. He co-invented it. Now, the question is, where is he going? Now, you can't, bl you can't blame him if he goes and starts his own project, right? But he's still going to be involved with Interledger protocol and web monetization this is, there's a platform called Coil. Coil is a platform that provides an alternative method for creators to monetize their content. So he's still going to be involved with that. But it's interesting to me to see where he pops up next. He, he's he's going to get more money. Wherever he goes, he's going to create more wealth. And you can't really blame the guy for wanting more out of life. Just Ripple begins 2020 with 49 job openings in the U.S., U.K., Brazil, Japan, Singapore, Dubai, and India. Listen, we know this. Ripple's doing amazing. Ripple is growing leaps and bounds. I have a ton of friends in, in, in crypto family, you guys that hold XRP, and I want to see you guys do amazing. When we go on our crypto cruise together, I want to hear the struggles and the stories, how you went from the, the doldrums of XRP depths to mega rich XRP holders. Like, that's me. I just want to see everybody be successful. It's that simple. French woman criticized her bank on Twitter. As a result, her professional account, personal account, and children's account got suspended. These banks, man, they have so much power. When you can control the money supply, when you control someone's money, man, that's powerful. So her, her, her professional bank account, which was linked to her bookstore, she's an author, uh, her personal account, her joint account, her companion's account, and one of her daughter's accounts basically had issues here, and I'll show you why. So... She never had any difficulty. She always paid everything that needed to be paid. She 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 ran payments through this bank. It's a, she has an EFT POS terminal, point of sale terminal. And so she called her bank. She had problems with this. She called her bank 36 times, 36, right? Get it right. Should have been taking crypto. Anyways, so then she goes on Twitter and she writes to customer support. And basically the... Agency manager finally calls her after 36 calls. You know what he says? Hey, instead of helping her find a solution to the problem, they basically threatened to close her account. Then she got a letter in the mail dated the beginning of December, middle of December, and they basically brought her in and said, hey, we want to close all your accounts in person because she reached out on Twitter. You know, it's just, gosh, man, this, this power is, is just a little bit too much. There's a new crypto bank by former Starling co-founder that could soon launch. So this is called Ziglu. And I like this idea because I think there's a good segue for cryptocurrency into mainstream where people can come in or, or visit a bank, a branch, and, and, and basically they've got their fiat there, they've got their crypto there, and they, they've got an exchange there, right? And so that's this idea. This is, there's a, there's a, a beta app right now that's out and basically, they're going to launch this later on in the month. It's going to enable users to buy, sell, hold cryptos and fiat. And they're going to have a MasterCard uh, debit card so you can spend your funds. So, again, they're, they've got big aims. They, they, they're looking to process $1 billion in transactions in 2020. They want to expand to the United States in the fourth quarter of this year. South Korea, I'm ready to move there, and here's why. They won't tax cryptocurrency profits for now. Man, that's huge. Boy, it's tax season, baby. Gosh, man, now, now it's time to pay the piper. God, yeah, taxes. I was, I was, I was talking to a gentleman from the Canary Islands uh, via email. He reached out to me. He's got this cool idea for for a project in the Canary Islands. And the Canary Islands is off the coast of Spain, and they have some tax benefits as far as being there. So, again. I was looking up all the different countries with tax breaks, and it costs, you have to be pretty well off to, to have dual citizenship. It's going to cost you $100,000, $250,000 if you want dual citizenship in another country. They're just going to let you pay for it and buy it.
right? And there, there's, uh, there's places in the UK, millions of dollars to have dual citizenship there, you know, but again, the tax benefits probably aren't there in, in, in the UK, but they're, they're just the, the federal taxes are tough in general. Like you get up to a certain level, level and they're taking a bunch of your money, you know? So again, South Korea, let's go. Call me up. <laughs> if you guys like the content that I provide on a daily basis, be sure and subscribe to the channel, like the video, comment below, hit the bell for notifications. Thanks so much. I'll see you guys tomorrow.